What's going on guys? Today is a big day in the Geek Culture Studios. We have been waiting months for this. Months. You know, since Ahsoka Tano, the Mandalorian helmet. And it's finally arrived. This is a global first unboxing of Hasbro's Force FX Elite of the Darksaber. This is it. Woo! I cannot wait. Zach, are you ready? Are you excited, Zachy? Yeah. You don't sound excited. Be excited, Zachy! Yeah! 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 And this video is brought to you by Secret Lab. Now, here at Geek Culture, we really like our Secret Lab chairs. As a matter of fact, we use them primarily for all the work we do, and they come in a variety of different sizes. This is Omega Titan, Titan XL, and talk about fabrics and materials. You got PU 2.0 leather, you got genuine leather, and also soft weave. And in terms of collaboration, we got World of Warcraft, Dota, LOL, DC characters, Harley Quinn, Joker, Batman, even Game of Thrones. There is a secret lab chair for you. For more information, click on the link in the description below. Okay, I do want to say this. We did not steal this from the Hasbro factory because we get these questions from our Transformer reviews. That did not happen. Thank you, Hasbro Singapore, for sending this over to us. Uh, we are really honored to be able to unbox this with you guys here. I have not seen this. The tape is on it. I am experiencing this the same way you guys are in this video. Man, I can't wait. Oh, man. I mean, I've seen, you know, variations of the Dark Saber through, you know, independent Saber uh, companies out there, especially Saber Mach in Singapore. They had a prototype that we saw, which we couldn't obviously photograph or film. So I'm, I'm excited to see what Hasbro has done with this. Is this a must buy? Is this a pass? Let's find out. Okay, now we're gonna bring out the official Geek Culture unboxing knife. It's pink in color because, why is it pink, Zachy? Because it's fun, Bobby. Well, we need blue or green, Geek Culture colors. Man, we'll fix it in post. Fantastic. Okay, hold, hold, that, hold that up first. Okay, and then three, two, one, and there we go. Okay, yeah, see the power of TV. Wow, man. it's even better built. You're really good. First, before we get to the unboxing, let's talk about the outside of the box as we need to do here in the studios. As you can see, we have Moff Gideon here. We have Mandalorian. This is coming right from the TV show all the way. Force Effects Elite right here. This is a heavy box, guys. I mean, from the Ahsoka Tano uh, saber to this, this is, feels more robust. So I'm guessing this has gotta be all metal, man. This has gotta be... This is gonna be amazing. Okay, now we're gonna move to the back of it real quick here. And we have the entire dark saber with these arrows here. I hope it doesn't have arrows in it. Please don't have arrows in it because I don't wanna be directing traffic. It shouldn't have arrows. So on this, we've got the standard stand that's on the same as all the other lightsabers. So Republic, Empire, I hear the comments in the section below. Obviously we have this for the blade, effect pointed. They're um, saying in a very different language, which I can't speak. So yes, international box international languages. We'll find out when we unbox it right now. Okay, first, always save the box for collectibles because you never know, it could be worth a lot of money one day. Because as far as I know, this is the first Darksaber Hasbro's ever made. This is a very difficult thing to unbox, actually, when you look at it, because it's like, if you untap it here, it's, yeah, it's just, okay. Unboxing could be improved, number one. We get here to the, center, to the area here, so Star Wars Force Effects Elite, the black series. You've got your instruction manual here. Everything is wrapped up. We're removing the cardboard. I'm so excited for this, Zachy. You have no idea. I am super excited for this. All right, so now we're going to uh, take out the instruction manual here with all our documentation, safety documents, because Hasbro want us to be safe at all times. We've got the Star Wars, the black series Mandalorian Darksaber Force Effects Elite instruction manual. Then also we have Mandalorian, I'm off getting on the back of it. And this explains how to put the batteries in, everything else, because, is it batteries? We know it's not battery. Wait a second. What? Yep. No. It's a battery pack. So you can charge this via USB? Yep. Oh, sweet. Finally, finally. We don't need like AA or AAA batteries for these things. And here is the USB cable. Okay, it's micro USB. 
Yeah, yeah. I wish it was USB C. Yeah, 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 you gotta go USB C in 2021. Hasbro, you dropped the ball on that one, but at least you got USB charging. Small thing, small, at least you can charge it via USB. Here is the stand, as we've seen on the Ahsoka Tano uh, lightsaber as well. Some people say Empire motif and Republic. Honestly, looks like the Empire motif to me, but anyway, it's the standard stand that is, holds the uh, lightsaber vertically without the blade, of course. So that is going over here. Now we've got this piece of plastic, which I don't know what it looks like yet or what it's used for yet. We will find out in the instruction manual. First, we're gonna take out the hilt. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, wow. Are we serious with this? Yo, this is full metal. Excellent. This is a weapon. Wow, hold on a second. Let's take a look at this for a second. Okay, this has got to be like three, two, three kilos. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> or in America, that's about maybe a couple, a few pounds. But this is really, this is no joke. You are not doing any sort of uh, combat saber with, sabering with this thing at all. What well, you wouldn't want to do it anyway. But even cosplayers out there, be warned. This is hefty. How? Okay, I could. Girl, shit. Yeah. yeah, get out of here, get the chopper. I got the dark saber now. You don't have it anymore, Mandalorian. Arnold makes his appearance in season three of The Mandalorian. Let's move on to the blade. Ah, so this is one of the most important things of this because this is the first time we're seeing a lightsaber with this flat designed blade to it. Now, first impressions of this, we don't know how it lights up yet, but you know, in the Darksaber that we saw in the Mandalorian series, there was these sort of like these cracklings of white light that would go through it. A um, little bit, not too much. And also in some of the independent Darksabers I've seen on the market, they had a little bit of that as well. On this one, it looks like it's a matte black all the way through. Now, it's not painted on there. As you can see here, we can get closer to it. It's sort of a plastic uh, piece on each side that is uh, attached to it. So it's sort of... Um, it's not, it's not, I would say, inexpensively made. It looks well, it looks like it's good quality. We get to the, the area here where you slot it in, and obviously this has a very interesting contraption the way that it's designed. So we'll see how that works in just a minute. But um, it's not really sharp at the end of it, so that's fine. You're not gonna poke anyone or hurt anybody. And it has some, it's not that heavy. So I would say the standard probably, the standard lightsaber blade would be a little bit heftier than this, but of course it is flat, so it, have reduction in weight, but we gotta see how it lights up. We gotta see how this lights up because that is where this is gonna be a must buy or maybe a pass. So we have removed the box. We've got the essentials on the table. We have read the instructions a little bit. And so we'll walk you through what each of the parts are. Now, this one part here that Zaki was saying was the hilt is actually for the stand. So you can actually put it in uh, vertically. So. How it works is this. You can actually put this in like that, all right? And it stays. However, if you wanna light it up, you have the lights that come on the side of the hilt and you can leave that on your display as well. Look how cool this is. Now, I wanna put a disclaimer on this. Because of the weight of this, if you have a glass cabinet like we have here, okay, um, please be careful because if this drops because of the weight, it will crack that glass. It will. It is that heavy, guys. Uh, so I would definitely err on the side of caution when displaying this, making sure that it's on a very stable shelf or table because you don't want to break glass or anything like that, okay? This is not a kid's product. Um, it says 14 and above, but based on this alone, this is a weapon. If someone breaks into your house, you can use the hilt to attack them and you'll probably win, okay? <laughs> So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's uh, turn that off a second. Just hold this down to turn it off. Already right away, I can say that the switch for to turn it on, the button to turn it on, and the blaster effects button here feels a lot better than the Ahsoka Tano's uh, saber. So uh, hats off to Hasbro for that. Um, just to kind of go talk about the hilt a little bit more before we get into all this though. Um, I love the grooves here. Uh, the paintwork is well done. You got this kind of like a graphite gray to black. Uh, in there. It has a really nice design. You've got this gloss black paint on the top here. 
and it looks a little bit different than of course the, the handle, but it works and especially when it's lit up, it has a nice effect to it. So, um, and there's a lot of detail and design here throughout the hilt area where the blade goes into. Um, you can see there's been a lot of attention to the detail on this. So you gotta give to Hasbro for this. I mean, obviously they're having access to the actual one they're using in the Mandalorian series. So this will probably be most screen accurate out of all of them. I mean, size wise, I mean, again, I haven't seen the actual dark saber or in display at any sort of like museum or any sort of uh, exhibition thus far from the series, but I'm guessing this has got to be pretty screen accurate. Um, we are seeing some Allen keys here. Uh, case in point, there is an Allen key uh, section right here, and there is a full one right here. So you got to keep that in mind because you're going to have to use the Allen key to uh, put in the battery uh, pack as well as to put in the blade. Okay, and you got to make sure that you use the correct Allen key because one is faux, one is real. So just be on the lookout for that. Probably don't do it, un, you know, under the influence of alcohol. Right, Zachy? Yeah, can't promise you anything, brother. <laughs> okay, fair enough. What's cool here on this is actually there are a couple parts. I've just turned it on to uh, light this up. Does it be all the way out, Zachy? Yep. Doesn't come with an extra screw, so uh, I would definitely say this is something you probably could find in a hardware store. So just. Uh, you know, maybe you want to pick up an extra one just to be safe. That would always be good because in case you do you lose it, then you won't be able to do these things. Now, we take off this piece of metal uh, part of the hilt first, right? As you can see here, we've got the light uh, window here where the um, LED is showing, okay? And then you can pull this piece out. Now, this is sort of to protect what's inside of it and also kind of give you that um, full look without the blade in there. So that is also metal. Everything on this thing is metal right now, guys. This is a really robust hilt. Um, I can't emphasize enough how heavy this thing is, but it's really heavy. And when you look inside, this is not a NeoPixel blade, guys. This is just an LED blade, as you can see right here. Zach, you see if you can zoom in on that real quick. Yep. So you can see the connections right there and the lights protruding. And as we pull the battery out, ooh, look at the design on this. Hey, this is quite nice. There's a lot of design motif on this battery. Case in point, see all the lines there? It looks like circuitry, whatever the case may be. And it goes all the way around the battery. Of course, there's safety information, et cetera, et cetera. But this looks like it's removable. So we have a screwdriver here and we're going to actually unscrew this to see what kind of battery it is. Because over time, you're probably gonna have to replace this. And if you do, what battery do you replace it with? Ah, this is your battery right here. It looks like a rechargeable lithium ion battery. So you can find your batteries at. So this is not a standard battery per se. Um, maybe you have to contact Hasbro or whatever the case may be. I'm not a battery expert, but this is what's powering this entire Sabre is here. Um, so keep that in mind. So, but yeah, this is a little bit of a process to truly charge this thing because now you can only charge it outside of the, the hilt. There is the USB port right here. So this is the micro USB port here on this side. And we've got it plugged in. Do you ever wonder what this hole is in our desk here? We have USB ports. We charge that in, plug that in, and it's red. So I guess when it's green, it's charged. I mean, we don't know. We, you know, this is our first unboxing of this, but there you go. This is how you charge the battery to the dark saber. Very cool. Do wish it was USB-C. You know, it's 2021 micro USB, but it is what it is. So to put the blade in first, you're going to actually put this metal sheath over the blade and bring it all the way to the end. Okay, now you're gonna slide this in ever so, like this. All right, see that? Lock sure, make sure it's there, it's locked in, it's good. Then you gotta tighten this thing up with the Allen key and the screw once again. First off, this is a long hilt as you can see, and I've got pretty large hands, so I can grab this with both hands here. Now, this part of my hand is really getting to the button area here. I don't wanna turn this on yet. We gotta wait for the unveiling. But just to let you know in terms of how it feels, it is solid. 
there is no movement with this blade inside of the hilt. It's locked in there, of course, we've got this screwed in, so it's pretty tight. Um, this is not a combat saber, guys. I wouldn't try it. Um, this is for display or for cosplay purposes only. Um, but, you know, length is good. I love the whole black effect, dark effect on it. And yeah, this feels really nice. I would venture to say already right now, this feels better than Ahsoka Tano's blade in terms of the whole construction and everything else. And I think uh, you guys out there, if you were like, you know, I don't want something that feels inexpensive, you're not gonna get it with this. But now, the moment of truth, to turn on the dark saber for the first time. Zach, you ready? Yeah. I need a moment. Please be good, please be good, please be good, please be good, please be good. Please oh, be good. The guy is close, man. I mean... No, 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 I'm using the force for it to be good. I want it to be good. Here we go. Three, two. Huh. Does it get any louder? Yeah, first impressions, audio is a little low. I was expecting this to be louder. And uh, I mean, I don't know if this is due to charging or what, or because it's a metal hilt that the speakers aren't. I mean, it sounds loud when you kind of move it to the side. It's a bit of a delay. Ah, okay guys, here it is. Here are the speakers right here, okay? If you hold it like a normal lightsaber, nothing. And you can actually accidentally turn it off too. So, you're gonna wanna hold it down here to get maximum sound, which is a little bit odd. Honestly, I think yeah. down here would've been better, right? Yeah. Because you hold it here, you, you cover. So now we're gonna do a sound comparison between the dark saber and Ahsoka Tano saber here. Because, yeah, this is quite low. So, okay, let me move my hand away. We're gonna turn this on. There's no like, like there's no sound like that with this. It's just, yeah, there's nothing like wow. Oh my God, wow. You know, like that first time you turn on a saber, it's like, okay, as opposed, Now, of course, there's delayed reaction on this as well, like the Darksaber, but the sound is coming from here. So no matter where you hold it on the hilt, you're always gonna get that sound. Versus this one, it's right here. So if I hold it normally, I'm covering the speakers. So here's to my mic so you guys can hear what I'm talk talking about. Even the turning on. See how loud that is? Right? And here's the dark saber. Really? So anticlimactic. Anticlimactic is the word. This is very anticlimactic. Come on. This is Let's not talk about sound for a moment. Let's go to the blade, okay? Because this is obviously one of the more important parts of this saber because this is very unique. Um, we've never seen an official um, saber from Hasbro or from Disney or from Star Wars or Lucasfilm for that matter that has this design. But let's look at this for a second. So in the middle of it, you have this black plastic area. And as I mentioned earlier in this review, it's not painted on there. It's like another piece that is uh, glued on or it's adhesive to it where it's stuck onto the light portion of it. And you can see those individual LED lights all the way through this to the very top and around. However, though, if we want to be screen accurate for a moment, when you look at the dark saber, let's say in the Mandalorian or even in the animated series, you are going to see some little bit of light, like uh, crackling coming through to the black area, just ever so slight. And you don't have that here. So it's just a very definitive black line to the white lights here. Now you get a little bit of that uh, unevenness with the LED lights here. Some are a little bit brighter than the others. So I think that's what Hasbro was trying to do. 
replicate that unevenness with the dark saber with these LEDs, but I wish it was a little bit brighter. As a matter of fact, Zachy, can we turn off the lights here for a second? Let's see how it looks in the dark. I mean, this is pretty wicked. I mean, just looking at it right now, personally, this looks cool. I do wish it was a bit brighter though, because I think a bit brighter would even make that light border around the dark saber even more pronounced. Uh, but again, on screen or on camera that you're seeing right now, it might look a little bit brighter than I see it in person. Now, in terms of the blaster effect button here, when you press it, you're gonna see there's individual LEDs that light up red, right? Which is kind of cool, it gives it a little bit more uh, something unique that stands out. But if you hold it down, you're gonna get this effect here. So it's like if you're impaling a wall or if you're impaling somebody, you know what I mean? Or if you're clashing a saber with somebody else, you're gonna get this burn effect. So we've got red, orange, yellow. I don't know if you guys see it exactly on screen. It's ever so slight, but it is quite cool. And of course you get the sound effects with it. I mean, I have to say the sound profiles are really good on it. It's just, unfortunately, the volume is, you know, when you have your hand there, it's not so good. And as you saw right there, this button right here to turn on the saber is very easy to press. Now in Ahsoka Tano's, it was more difficult because you had to really use your fingernail or dig your finger in there to press, you know, the button to turn it on. But here, if I'm holding, holding the saber, moving it around, I can automatically turn it off like that. And then if I just turn it on like that as well. So if you want that flick of the wrist action, you can do that. But I, it would have been nice if there was a little bit of a, I would say more tension on the button so you don't accidentally press it just by swinging it around. Yeah. It's lackluster and, it's, and it shouldn't be because with the dark saber and it's got, I mean, the sound profiles are accurate, you know, based on our research. Obviously there's various different sound profiles depending on how you use the saber, but for when it's, you know, the turned on and that pulsating sound of what it has, it's accurate, but it's really low. So, I mean, I don't know, Hasbro, if you're watching this, maybe you guys can increase the volume internally on this before you send it out to other people. I mean, they say this is a production set. I don't know, we're the first to have it. Um, but I would definitely like boost this up by like, five or 10 decibels, you know what I mean? Like make it loud because with the speakers here on the hilt right here, you're gonna cover it with your hand, you know? So you lose all that sound. Like you hear, like, you can barely hear anything. Now you hear, or even put a sound profile there, yeah. something because here is just really not a good place to have it. Yes, bro, you can be better than this. For those of you who've gone to Galaxy's Edge and you picked up a lightsaber there, it's that same kind of build quality. So I applaud Hasbro for uh, bringing that into the Force FX Elite series with that because that's what it feels like. Metal, robust, all the way through, but the speakers on it are just lackluster. It's, it is what it is. It is what it is. You're right, Zachy. It is what it is. But I, you know what? Maybe, maybe it'll sound better with the Mandalorian helmet on. Hold on. Seriously, how many Baby Yodas do you guys have here? Like, are you guys obsessed? Baby Yoda, here, 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 here. Wow. Wow. Now I rule Mandalore. This is cool. Okay. Sounds about the same, but I look cooler holding the saber now, right, Zachy? Yeah, you do, man. Now, now, I, now I look the part. Just need one more thing. Get over here, little guy. All right, baby Grogu, we're gonna need your opinion on this, okay? Thank you. Is the dark saber a must buy? I know. It doesn't sound that good, right? Build quality is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I like the construction. Feels great. But what do you think of the sound? <sighs> Same thing. It is what it is. Conclusions. Great build quality. I actually like the blade overall. I mean, wish it was a little bit brighter, wish there was a little bit more effects you can do with it. But okay, for the first of its kind, it's legit. If you're a cosplay player that's gonna be using this for your outfit, you're gonna notice that the sound, you're not gonna hear much if you're actually grabbing onto the saber. If you're just more for 
showing in your case, you want to pull it out once in a while, okay, great. But uh, hopefully uh, Hasbro can, before they release this to the general public, increase the volume of the speaker by like five or 10 decibels because it definitely needs it. And with a much more impactful turning on and turning off sound, that I think would, that would really make this dark saber a must, must have. I mean, collectors, you're gonna buy this anyway, but for, you know, if you're on the fence and you're not, you know, married to having a uh, fully licensed saber, you might look elsewhere if you want that sound and that more interesting in terms of lighting. But uh, I mean, I, I like, I do like this overall. It's just, I was hoping for a little bit louder. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Is this something that you're gonna pick up no matter what? Are you on the fence of the Darksaber? Does the volume of this make you wanna cancel your order? I would love to hear from you guys. Anyway, with that guys, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, like this video, it helps us out a lot. Stay safe out there and we'll chat to you soon. Take care. Bobby, you know what time it is? Yeah. It's time to release... The Kraken! I wanted to say the Mendo Cut, but okay. Okay. You know what to do. Yeah. Okay, Mando cut. Here we go. Mando cut time. Mando cut. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Running out of breath. <laughs> Grogu likes it. Grogu approved. Yes, he does.